Well, it's a joy to be with you today. And I bring you greetings from our church, Cedar Home Baptist Church in Washington. In the United States. We're so happy to see that you love God's word here just like we do in America. Recently at my church, I finished preaching through the Gospel of John. And John was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. And he was very good friends with Jesus. And John wrote the book of John so that we might read about Jesus' life. So that we might know about his death and his resurrection from the dead. And so that we would believe in Jesus. And receive eternal life in him. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus often refers to himself as the I am. The phrase I am was a very sacred phrase. If you remember when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, Moses asked God what his name was. And God said, I am. So when Jesus said that he was, I am, he was saying that he is God. He was saying that he is the God who created the world. That he is the God who rules over everything. And he is the God who deserves worship from all peoples of the earth. I want to read from John 8, 57 to 59. I want to start at chapter 8, verse 56. When Jesus was talking to a crowd of Jewish people and their leaders, he said this. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Sifunzele, wana leso utoli le jo, Johane 8, verses 57 to 59. Wana jo, Johane, isn't it? Yeah, I wrote, gave you the wrong one. That's okay. Okay. Okay, Tara 56 in Nagate. 56. Ufundegaranji. We is the Abraham, watch a bull, a bull, a little and a lamb. One bone, a watch a bull, 57. A machuta assay, as he will. Who said the Minia Gallery, Mashumida, Sitan, Gutana, Gepa, Sel Sitella, Wutti, Sophonane, the Abraham, 58. Just what he will. Nikinisile, Nikinisile, Nitigini. Asena Gabi, Asena Gabi, Ko Abraham, Solo, Niko, Nami, fifty nine. Batsi Batata, Emma Jabuti, Batem Tobangao, 
Jesus was he, Pipe Pipe, Wapuma Tempedi, Waham. So when Jesus referred to himself as I am, the people knew that he was claiming to be God. And since they did not believe that he was God, it says they tried to kill him right then and there. But it says that he supernaturally hid himself and escaped. There are many people today who try to argue that Jesus never claimed to be God. And that's nonsense. Because not only did Jesus claim to be God, but he claimed to be I am, who is the God of the Jews and of the whole world. In John's Gospel, Jesus sometimes refers to himself simply as I am. And sometimes Jesus puts a phrase after I am. And he does this to describe himself further for us. For instance, like you kids were singing about Jesus being the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And when he said that, he was saying that I am the good shepherd of my people. So Jesus uses I am statements to describe everything that he is and everything that he is for us. So in our time together this morning, I want to look at seven I am statements. That Jesus made. All of these are found in the Gospel of John. First, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Once Jesus miraculously fed a crowd, there were 5,000 men and their families. So there were... And that was just 5,000 men. So with the families, it probably would have been 20,000. And the Bible says that after following Jesus around all day, the crowd was hungry. And there was a little boy in the crowd. And Jesus took five loaves and two fish from the boy. It was everything he had. And Jesus multiplied those loaves and fish to feed everybody. And after he did that, Jesus said that physical bread is not our greatest need. Let's read from John 6, 47 to 51. Chapter 8. John 6. Johan? Yep, sorry. Chapter 6, verse 47. Yep. We can you see them, we can you see them, it's a gimmick. No, 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 no,
In English, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He is the bread that came down from heaven. And he says that if you want to live in heaven after this life, then you must eat Jesus. And he says, if you do not uh, live, if you do not want to live in heaven after this life, then you will live apart from him after this life in hell. And Jesus described hell as a terrible place. Where there's everlasting weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Eat me. Now that's a funny thing to say. How do you eat Jesus? Well, Jesus wasn't talking about physically eating him. <laughs> to eat Jesus <laughs> means to take him into ourselves <laughs> through faith. It means to believe that Jesus is God. It means to believe that we need a Savior to rescue us from our sin. And whoever takes in Jesus through faith will live forever. And Jesus says that the bread that he gives to us is his own flesh. It's his perfect life, his crucified body, and his resurrected body in glory. And so we must receive Jesus' death and resurrection through faith in order to have friendship with him. So what are you and I feeding our spirits to satisfy us? Have you taken in Jesus through faith to give you eternal life? Are you feeding on Jesus and his word to nourish your soul every day? If not, then put your faith in Jesus today. And he promises to feed your soul forever. Second, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. John 8, 12 says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
John chapter 8, verse 12. Just what could you mean? Who was put in what? Meaning, you can't believe. Lord, you know, the lie, and I get a saham, the boom yame. What are we over? The People of all different faiths agree that our world is a spiritually dark place. I know of people who have chosen not to have children because they do not want their kids to grow up in such a terrible world. And it is true that there is much spiritual darkness in our world. There are wars and famines and diseases. We have an enemy named Satan who tries to tempt us to do evil. Satan wants us to obey him instead of God. He wants us to dishonor God's name. So yes, we do live in a spiritually dark world. And that's why all of us need Jesus. Jesus is the light in our darkness. Have any of you kids ever walked outside in the dark? Do you like doing that? Walking in the dark? That is what life and eternity is like without Jesus. It's scary. But Jesus is the light in our darkness. There is no other hope and no other light than Jesus Christ. And Jesus calls us to come to himself. He tells us how to get to him. He says, trust in me and I am with you. Turn away from the darkness of this world and turn to me and I will guide you in the darkness. And Jesus tells us this because he loves us so much. And he shines brightly in the darkness to show how glorious he is and to bless us with the light of himself. The entire world from Swaziland all the way to America needs Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Third, Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep. In John 10, verses 7 to 9, it says, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Nago Jesu wapinza wati gubo, ni kinisile ni kinisile ni tigini, minengilisangu leti infu, bonge la befiga kutala kunami, bange masela, nebapang, kotu wati infu atizange setibala lele, minengilisangu, umundu nagangena ngami, wea usinziswa, 
Wea ungena apume. Akanze li zelo. Lisela li tela kweba. Negubulala. Negupupisa. Mine ntele uti bantu babe negupila. Babe nago kupupume. Have any of you ever seen a sheep pen or a pen for goats? Well, the sheep pen, yes, is where, is where the sheep come for protection. And it's where they come to be accounted for. And Jesus says he is the door of the sheep. So if you want into Jesus' pen, if you want him to spiritually protect you, if you want to be known as one of his sheep, then you must first enter his pen through the door. Jesus says, I am the door. Jesus does not say, I am one of many doors. He says, I am the only door. And whoever enters by Jesus will be saved. We know so many people who are looking for the door. They're looking for a door that will bring them true happiness and life. They're looking for purpose and for joy, and that's not a bad thing. But there are many, many false doors. There are many doors that promise to give us life and joy. But they only lead to brokenness and to death. Greed. Sexual sin. Drug addiction. Gossip. <coughs> Division and hatred. False religions. All of these things claim to be the door. <laughs> they are not the door to Jesus' sheep pen. Only Jesus is the door to eternal life and joy. And thankfully, Jesus reaches out to you and me. And he invites us to come into the pen through him. And we do that by trusting in him alone. Jesus is the door of his sheep. Mm. Fourth, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. In John 10, 11 to 15, He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Meaning, 
Umuntu lo tashiwe longe siye umelu suwe timfu. Na le timfu kume sito take. Na kapona impisi ita ushia le timfu abalege. Impisi iti sugele, iti tagate. Ngobe pela lo muntu utashiwe. Ngago agati, agati na gegele le timfu. Mine ngumelu silo lungile. Ngiatati timfu tami na tofuti tia ngati. Njengo ba na babe uya ngati na mingi ya mati. Nitela kupila kwa mingi nga eti. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus umelu silo lungile. He does not abandon us even when we run from him. Akasishi no maa geti nesiti kweshi sakuye simbalege. He is faithful to us. We are tembega, we are tubega, we are tembega geet. And when we try to run, he, he runs down and picks us up and brings us back on his shoulders. Nasibalega, we are silanzela, asibute, asibege etombe, no maa ekebe nilake. The book of Hebrews calls Jesus the great shepherd. Jesus is our great shepherd. And we who trust in him are his sheep. And Jesus says that he loved us so much that he laid down his life for us. He was killed in order to keep us safe. And no one took his life from him. He laid it down for us. He was killed so that we would not be separated from God. But so that we could live in God's sheep pen forever. Who else has ever done this for you? What other God has ever laid down his life for you? You will not find one in the whole world except Jesus. How can anyone be protected from the wolves of hell called demons? We cannot fight them ourselves. Only the good shepherd Jesus can rescue us from them. Jesus is our good shepherd. Who loved us so much that he died to save us. We are totally safe in him. And if you are one of Jesus' sheep. He knows you very well. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what you're going through today. And he cares about you. He says he knows the number of hairs on your head. Not even you know the number of hairs on your head. <laughs> Jesus loves you. And you are safe in him. And there's no better place to be right now and forever. Then in Jesus' flock. Hmm. Fifth, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Maybe some of you have heard the story of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Mary and Martha were devastated when their brother Lazarus died. They'd asked Jesus to come heal Lazarus. But he did not come in time. 
And by the time Jesus showed up, Lazarus had been dead and buried for four days. Let's read John 11, 25 to 27. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that? Do you believe this? She said to him, "Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world." Jesus was guye, minengu vuga negu pila. Lo kolo ngi mino me anga fa we au pila. Lo wolo pila akolo ngi mi anege afe na pagate. We agu kolo lo guna. Wapendula wati ye bongo siniyako wakuti we na umu kresu ingota na yangulungulu. Le labe la, labe taguta emtabeen. And after Jesus said this, Emba wakupa chesu sega shito la makama. He went outside to Lazarus' tomb. Wapumela mepandle waya etune la Lazaro. Where Lazarus had been buried for four days. And the Jews believed that a spirit hovered over a body for three days. But they said that after four days it was impossible for a spirit to re enter a body. And that's why Jesus waited four days to make this even more amazing. He went outside of Lazarus' tomb. And with a loud voice, he said, Lazarus, come out. And we read that Lazarus walked out of the tomb. And his hands and feet were still wrapped with linen strips. And his face was still covered with a burial cloth. Jesus brings people back from the dead. With the power of his word. If you have trusted in Jesus, he has brought you back from the dead. Maybe not physically, but spiritually, he made you born again. And in the Bible, we read of that Lazarus was one of several people Jesus rose physically from the dead. Only Jesus could do this because only Jesus is God. And only Jesus has power over life and death. And when he raised those people physically from the dead, he was foreshadowing what he would do for himself. Remember that um, in his last week in Jerusalem, Jesus was whipped and crucified and stabbed in the heart. And after suffering on the cross, he offered his spirit to God the Father. Saying, it is finished. And three days later, Jesus raised himself up from the dead. Just like he said he would do. Now Jesus did for himself what none of our greatest doctors can do. Jesus did for himself what none of our greatest doctors can do. 
ngendlela yekwekutsi kute dokotela noma umuntu nje langakutshela into yenteke aphindza atifakazele ngayo There is no hospital in Swaziland or America that can raise people from the dead Kute sibedlela nje laka ngwane nase America noma emhlabeni wonke lapho khona kwatiwa khona kutsi ukhona umuntu longafike avuse umuntu kulaba fini And if Jesus raised himself and others from the dead, then he could certainly do this for you. Loko kusho ukuthi nawe ngamunye ngamunye wena lo sote Jesu empilweni yakho usengakuvusa futhi nawumemukela njengenkosi nemsindisi empilweni yakho. And again this is what Jesus does every time he makes someone born again through faith. Naso sonke sikhathi Jesu ngibona loko nje la kwenda kuvusa abantu kulabafile esigabeni sakamoya ngekukholwa. Jesus takes our old selves. Jesu uthatha umuntu lomdzala kithi and he unites them to himself on the cross am tsatse amumbanza kanye noma amhlanganise nemtimba wakhe lo wafa wabethelwa esiphambanwe so that when his body died our old selves died with him kuze kwekuthi ngekufa kwakhe umuntu lomdzala kithi wafa wabethelwa kanye naye esiphambanwe and since we are united to jesus njengoba sahlanganiswa sabang lababuyiselwe ku jesu we are also united with him in his resurrection futhi ngalokunjalo nathi siyahlanganyela siyambanzakanywa ekuvusweni kanye naye there is a day coming in the future kunelilanga lelitako kulokudako when all of us will receive glory various bodies just like his lapho khona siyawemukeliswa noma siyawukwembathiswa umtimba wengathi mulu njenga Jesu nakavuswa kulabafile esiphambanweni So now that Jesus has risen us spiritually from the dead njengoba ke Jesu asivusile kamoya What is the new life that we are supposed to live? Kusho ukuthi nike injani noma ngiyiphi le mphilo lekufuna siyiphile lekhombisa ukuthi sesemukeliswe umuntu lomusha na Our life is Jesus now. Impilo yethu semjesu ilqobo lwakhe nyalo. That's why he says I am the resurrection and the life. Kungaleso sizathu athi mina ngikuvuka nekuphila. Our new lives are filled with friendship with Jesus. Impilo yethu lensha ke yona ngiyona legcwaliswe nebudlelwane nebungani bethu kanye na Jesu. He may only be in this building for a few hours a week. Kungenteka nje sibe khona la kulesakhiwe emala ngalambalwa evikini. But Jesus is in your heart all the days of the week. Kepha Jesu uhlala akhona enhlithweni yakho onke malanga evikini ngaso sonke sikhathi. And Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us. Jesu usemukelisa ke moya lo ingcwele lo ngu And he lives with us now and forever. Uphila nathi uphila kithi kuyawuze futhi kube phakathi. Sixth, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Wesithupha ke Jesu uthi mina ngiyindlela neliciniso nekuphila chapter 14. While eating his last supper with the disciples, Jesus said in John 14:1-6, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my house, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, "Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way?" And Jesus said to him, "I am the way." Jesus said to him, "I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." Insitiyo yenu ingakhathateki, kholwane uNkulunkulu nikholo nangimi. Ekhaya lababe kunetindlu letinyenti. Ngisaya kunilungisela indzawo. Ngabe angnitsheli loko kube akunjalo. Nasengile nganilungisela indzawo. Ngiyawubuya nginilandze nitekimi kuze kutsi lapho ngikhona nibe khona nani. Niyayathi indlela leyakhona. Niyayathi indlela leya lapho ngiyakhona. Tomase wathi kuye, ngosi asati lapho uyakhona. Indlela singayathi njani. Jesu wathi kuye, mine ngindlela neliciniso nekuphila. Kute longeta kubabe nakangeti ngami. So how do you get to the heavenly mansion of God? 
Ufika njani gele esa kiwe nje su lega stembisa so na lesa kwe katlega kulule esu lwini na. And how can you be sure that when you get there, you're going to find a room Jesus prepared just for you? Ungaba njani gene stinsego se kutine mambala le ndu la tite chesu ya yungse la ayungse lewe na iko na le su lwini. By entrusting yourself to Jesus today. By believing that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. By believing him that nobody comes to God the Father except through Jesus. Again, Jesus does not say, I am a way and a truth and a life. Jesus is not one of many ways. He is the only way. Jesus does not say he's one of many truths. He says, he's the only truth. And he's not one of many eternal lives. He's the only eternal life. Jesus says, I am the, the way and the truth and the life. So this means that truth is not whatever you want it to be. Truth is not whatever your uh, relatives tell you it is. Truth is not whatever you feel like it is. Jesus is the truth. In the Bible is Jesus' word. The Bible tells us the truth. And so we believe Jesus. And we put our faith in Jesus. Because he is the way and the truth and the life. And seventh, Jesus said, I am the true vine. In John 15, 1 to 6, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. <laughs> Wea wa chuba. Onge makala la tela titelo. Wea wa, wea wa tena. Kuze ate utela kakulu. Ninege. <coughs> Seni keze gile. Nange livi. Lese ngili kulumile gini. Lalani gimi na migini. Njengo velikala linege. Ligu ati utela titelo ngegwalo. Kupela na lisheti esi kwini. Ganja loge nani. Kupela na nisalagini. Mine ngumvini. Nine nge makala. Lobo lo salagini na miguye. Wea utela titelo leti nyendi. Ngobe kute. Leni nga kwenda nga pande kwa ami. Umundulo nga salagini. Wea ulatwa nga pande. Njenge likala abune ome kufike bantu batote la makala. Baye ubasa emlilwe. Lapo afige ashe kona. It's interesting that Jesus uh, does not merely say he is the vine. He says he is the true vine. Kwe amangalisa kekuti Jesu agasho kekuti ulikala nje. 
Jesus alone gives spiritual life. He gives us nutrition and energy. That, that creates spiritual fruit. And he says that we are like branches. So if we are connected to the, the true vine through faith, then the vine will give to us life. And nutrition and energy. So that we can produce good fruit. Yes. Well, okay. But what happens to branches that are not connected to the vine? They're not filled with life and energy of the vine. Those branches wither up and die. So without the life-giving power of the vine, the branches are useless. They can do nothing on their own. And without Jesus, we can do nothing. If we're not connected to Jesus through faith, then we do not have God's life and God's energy running through us. Now, our flesh and the world around us and Satan doesn't want us to believe that we need Jesus for life and power. The lie of Satan is that you can do everything you want to do. That you can do it all without Jesus. And that you will never suffer or die because of it. That is the lie that Satan told Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That is the lie they believed. And that is the lie that Satan still tells us today. But we must not believe him like Adam and Eve did. Satan is a liar. He wants us to believe that we can be happy and fulfilled without Jesus in our lives. Satan says, if you have romance, then you will be totally happy. Or you'll be truly happy if you have lots and lots of kids. Or only when God gives you a good job are you going to finally be happy. Or you'll never be happy until you have lots of money. Those are lies. We only need Jesus. Only Jesus is the true vine who pours his life and power into us. And 
We become connected to Jesus. When we decide to turn away from a life of sin. And to be united to him instead. And then after Jesus connects us to himself. He gives us new life and energy every day. And he says that we must abide in him. So to abide in Jesus means to make him the center of our lives. It means that to the best of our ability, Jesus and his word are at the front of our heads. It means that in everything we do, we want to worship Jesus through it. Whether we're fetching water, or we're washing the laundry, or we're working in the field, or we're doing our homework, we want to do it like we're doing it for Jesus and not people. And to abide in Jesus means that our souls get to rest. Because our salvation doesn't depend on our good works. It only depends on what Jesus did on the cross. It's such good news that his last words were, It is finished. The work of salvation is done. There are no more animals to slaughter to please God. Jesus is the final sacrifice who laid down his life for us. And so we can rest in this truth every day. And celebrate that God really loves us. And whenever we doubt God's love for us, we remember the cross and his empty tomb. And to abide in Jesus means that we trust in nothing except Jesus. There are some Christians who are always looking for a deeper spiritual truth. They get bored with Jesus and the gospel he's given us. But to abide in Jesus means we don't get bored with Jesus ever. We don't leave Jesus to go find better things. We don't put other gods next to Jesus as though uh, they... Um, we don't put other gods next to Jesus as though we need them in addition to him. Only Jesus is I am. And we'd be so thankful that he was so clear with us about that. Mm-hmm. 
So let me tell you again the seven I am statements in the Gospel of John. Pinze ke la maphuzu leka sikhombisa lesikhulume ngawo lapho khona Jesu ativeta khona kutsi ngincunguye. Jesus says I am the bread of life. Uthi ngisingwase kuphila. I am the light of the world. Uthi ngikhanya kwelive. I am the door of the sheep. Uthi ngulisango lelingilo lekugena esibayenze etimvu. I am the good shepherd. Uthi ngikumele usilolungile. I am the resurrection and the life. Uthi ngikuvuka nekuphila. I am the way and the truth. And the life. And I am the true vine. Jesus is the great I am. And Jesus' name alone is worthy to receive our worship. So let's celebrate today that he loves us more than we can imagine. And may we seek to live for the glory of Jesus' name alone. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time we have together. We believe that you are the I am. You are everything we need. We thank you for loving us even even when we were far away from you. You came to get us. Help us to trust in you entirely. For our eternal salvation. For eternal life with you. And for our daily needs. Please help us to live for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.